On the 8th of March 1914, more than a century ago, women took to the streets of London demanding the right to vote. In 1975, the United Nations recognized the 8th of March as International Women's Day. It is now celebrated across the world with more than 25 nations even declaring it a holiday. CNBC TV 18's Future Female Forward is an initiative to further gender equality and over the next 30 minutes we put the spotlight on the gender gap that exists in India Inc. and also highlight stories of women entrepreneurs and change agents leading the way. But first up, let's talk about the mutual fund industry where women are drastically underrepresented. Women comprise only 9.8% of the total fund managers and manage about 11% of the total mutual fund assets. That's according to a report by Morningstar India. Shivani Bazaz joins us now with all the details. Shivani. Out of the total 428 fund managers in the Indian mutual fund industry, only 42 are women, reveals the Women in Fund Management report by Morningstar India. Even though the number of women fund managers has increased over the last one year from 32 in 2022 to 42 in 2023, women still remain drastically underrepresented in the mutual fund industry with the meager 9.81% representation. The report also suggests that the total assets managed by women fund managers is approximately rupees 4.43 lakh crore, which is 11% of the total mutual fund assets. Over the last few years, there has been a steady decline in the percentage of the assets managed by women fund managers. This dip in the total asset under management by women is attributed to the exits of two big names, Swati Kulkarni of UTI Mutual Fund and Lakshmi Iyer of Kotak Mutual Fund in the last one year. When it comes to the tenure and consistency, only nine women fund managers have managed funds consistently for over five years. On the bright side, the report also suggests that 82% of the AUM managed by women fund managers has outperformed the peer group average on a one-year basis. Shivani, many thanks for joining us. 49% of women in the country are either not investing at all or are unaware of their investments. This was the key finding of the latest LXME Women and Money Power Report 2022. According to Women Financial Advisors, many women have been made to believe that men manage money better, which is a myth. You can catch a special report by Shivani on CNBCTV18.com, where financial experts chart out the key steps for women to achieve financial independence. Now, to an inspiring story, a recent NASCOM report read that 18% of startup firms in India feature at least one woman as a founder or co-founder. The success rate is more impressive. A woman is at least one of the co-founders of at least 36 unicorns and potential unicorns in India. So as we celebrate Women's Day this year, let's tang along with CNBC TV 18's Kanishka Sarkar, who met one such amazing first-generation female entrepreneur who runs an Amazon delivery service and her staff to learn more about their aspiration. 21-year-old Chandani is prepping for her work day. A delivery agent for Amazon, Chandani is excited about her first TV interaction and telling her story. First job in my Amazon. Mein. A female delivery agent ringing your bell isn't very common. But still, clearly, things are changing fast. Chandani couldn't care less as she zoomed past the traffic to make timely deliveries. Chandani says earlier people were shocked to see a girl delivering a package, but things are changing now. I have to do something to do business. I have to do something to do my own business. I will do Chandani is training to be a beautician and wants to have her own business someday. Young girls like Chandani are being supported by women like Manvi Dhavan, an Amazon delivery service partner who decided to start her entrepreneurial journey right in the middle of the pandemic. I had worked across the uh, telecom and banking sector, handling uh, call center operations for almost 15 years. But then around 2013, I decided to take a sabbatical for, uh, to take care of my children. They were really young at that time. But it was always clear that I have to come back and do something for myself. You know? So then I came to know about this uh, delivery service partner program of Amazon. And then I approached them and here we go. So they, I started with one station in January uh, 21 
and now I'm handling seven stations with Amazon. As Manvi made her way into the logistics business, she had to deal with drivers, contractors, delivery partners and warehouse staff who are mostly male, but she says it has never been a problem. This is a male dominant uh, industry the, uh, if we go by numbers, but then uh, you know Amazon has been extremely supportive and the kind of technology they provide, technology assistance they provide to us, the kind of uh, logistic experience they have, uh, they put everything in developing us as, an, as entrepreneurs. That is there and when I visit these stations, participation of women there at these stations is so well that I have never um, you know, come across such ki, um, that I am at a disadvantage as a female uh, or entrepreneur. Several of the over 100 delivery associates that Manvi manages are women, a job sector which was earlier dominated by men. A leap of faith is all you need. That's what Manvi believes in and that is what she's passed on to many delivery associates like Chandini who work with her. For many, life hasn't been all that easy. They had to fight family to be in the profession, some had struggled shifts alongside their household works and numerous other problems. But they never looked back because the financial independence that this work gives them is priceless to them. In Delhi, Kanishka Sarkar with camera person Rajinder Singh. And from one inspirational story to another, 41-year-old Deepa Thakur is Deputy Secretary at the Maharashtra Women's Commission. Deepa cleared the Maharashtra Public Service Commission in 2007 and has been serving as a government officer for the last 16 years. Dealing with various crimes against women on the occasion of International Women's Day and as part of our latest initiative, Future Female Forward, a women's collective, Santya Gora brings you Deepa's story. A fourth generation bureaucrat, 41 year old Deepa Thakur is no stranger to the life of a government officer. Currently serving as Deputy Secretary in the Maharashtra Women's Commission, Deepa says she's joined the family business, one started by her family when the British ruled India. I'm a fourth generation uh, government job. So, in the British era, I was an education officer. So, I was a fourth district ki wo officer. Thi. और फिर मेरी मदर है सो नानी तो ये सब लोग थे फादर भी तो गवर्नमेंट ऑफिसर ही थे दीपास वर्क इज नॉट लाइक एनी दैट हर फैमिली हैज डन ऑन अ डेली बेसिस शी डील्स विद केसेस ऑफ वुमेन हु हैव सर्वाइव्ड वेरियस क्राइम्स रेंजिंग फ्रॉम डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस टू डाउरी हरासमेंट टू सेक्सुअल क्राइम्स अ बिग हर्डल फॉर वुमेन शी सेस इज दैट जेंडर इक्वालिटी इज अ कांसेप्ट दैट्स ऑफन इदर इग्नोर्ड कंप्लीटली और एग्जिस्ट ओनली ऑन पेपर it's a bias she herself faced at the start of her career. ये मेरा जब MBAC का इंटरव्यू था ना, मुझे ऐसे पूछा गया था कि हमें तो लग रहा है एजुकेशन वाइज हम बहुत आगे निकल चुके हैं, लड़कियों को बहुत सारी फैसिलिटीज हैं, बहुत सारी योजनाएं हैं, तो आप आपको भी यही लगता होगा, तो मैंने कहा देखिए ऐसा है ना मेरे साथ मेरे कोई और भी बॉय अगर कोई कंप्लीट कर रहा है अगर वो इसमें क्लियर नहीं भी करता है तो उसे हां उसका अटेम्प्ट नहीं हुआ लेकिन हमारे लिए मेरे लिए ऐसे कि मैं अगर ये नहीं करती तो मुझे शादी के लिए प्रेशर मेरा माउंट हो सकता है लेकिन लड़के के लिए ऐसे कुछ नहीं है उसका करियर बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट होता है एनीवेज लेकिन लड़की के लिए तुम्हारा टाइम में शादी होना तुम्हारा करियर पूरा टाइमलाइन सोसाइटी ने डिसाइड कर रखा होता है लड़की के लिए ऐसे है Deepa believe it's the mindset that has to change if social reforms are to truly take hold and India is to become a country that walks the talk of equality. This is especially true, she says, for survivors of crimes against women, where empathy, compassion and respect can tip the balance and help ease the uphill battle these survivors face to reacclimate to life in society and overcome the trauma they have faced. Society is a very small thing for society. You listen to the victim. उस पे बिलीव कीजिए और छोटे 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 चीजों में उसको हेल्प कीजिए बस इससे भी उसका कॉन्फिडेंस बढ़ जाएगा और शी विल फील बिट रिलैक्स बस यही ज्यादा बहुत बड़ी बात है Deepa firmly believes that understanding support and empathy is the key to deal with the survivors of crimes against women Deepa says that the more we show collective compassion to women survivors the further we move towards a society where women can live without fear and prejudice and that's the key to a society free of gender bias and discrimination. And we at CNBC TV 18 thank Deepa Thakur for her service. Thank you so much ma'am. Thank you. 
a future female forward. Now, India has registered nearly 4.3 lakh crimes against women in 2021, 15% higher than in 2020. But there are dedicated men and women who fight these crimes every day. Police Inspector Anita Kadam is one such warrior. On the occasion of International Women's Day and as part of our latest initiative, Future Female Forward, CNBC TV 18 Santhya brings you Anita's story. On International Women's Day in 2022, Police Inspector Anita Kadam's life changed. She was posted to the Social Service Branch of the Mumbai Police. One of the key focus areas of this branch is handling crimes against women and rescuing young girls and women who are being trafficked and forced into prostitution is a big part of the mandate. I have been in one year, I have been in 111 girls, and I have been in 10 girls. And after that, I have been in the bar, and I have been in the total of 451 girls. Yes. 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 Every operation has different challenges and there are multiple risks involved. The job requires courage, patience, discipline and determination. But the social service branch was not Inspector Kadam's first brush against crimes against women, nor the first test of her bravery and mettle. In 2021, I was on a beat in Malwani in Malwani. So, when I was at night, Raja Nesha called me and told me that there was a girl who came to give a girl to give a girl. And I was so used to it that I had duty for three years. So, if a girl goes into the water, she can see that she is going. She didn't know that she was going. She didn't know that she was going. But I was in uniform and I was going to run away. I understood her well and understood her well and understood her well. I was going to run away and run away and run away. Inspector Kadam insists that rescuing victims is just the first step and by far the easiest. The hard part comes after when these young girls and women have to be rehabilitated and given the tools to pull their lives together and put the trauma behind. Society, she says, has a large role to play in this, but such support is often difficult to come by. Police Inspector Anita Kadam says society has to step up and play its part in the rehabilitation of these young girls and women. A big challenge for these women, she points out, is that society continues to ostracize them even after they have been rescued. And this makes it difficult for them to adjust to life and make headway in healing and rejoining society. And we at CNBC TV 18 thank Anita Kadam for her service. Thank you so much, ma'am. Back to the special episode of Future Female Forward as we mark International Women's Day. If you have to be, you have to be your own cheerleader. That was tennis legend Sanya Mirza's message to young girls as she bids adieu to tennis after a glittering career. Mirza is a six-time doubles Grand Slam champion and she's called on young girls to develop a thick skin. I spoke with Sanya in Dubai. This was her message to young aspiring girls and women. Listen in. Biggest strength that you can have, belief in yourself. And if you're not your biggest cheerleader, God knows there's nobody else out there because especially as young girls, um, you know, and, and playing a sport, like I'm just trying to draw a parallel. Anytime you start trying and start doing something new, you're more often told you cannot do something than you can. You know, and that is just how it works. That's the, that's the nature that we live in and the society we live in. The minute you say, I want to do something outside of the world, but what makes you think you're, you can do it? Nobody's ever done it. I mean, yeah, nobody's ever been number one in the world from our country, but I got there, you know. So that is the belief that you need to have, that you are, um, you know, how to become the best version of yourself, how to get the best out of yourself. You know, you're, you're in, in the public eye, you're being scrutinized, you're being judged, you're being evaluated every single decision of yours on the court, off the court, is up for discussion and national debate. Uh, how do you develop that thick skin where you say it's okay for me 
to make the choices that I'm making without seeking external validation. Actually, at 36 today, I can tell you that it's a lot easier. But trust me, when you put a 16-year-old, that's when I first had my first tryst with media, um, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, like all my friends are just worried about how to bunk school and meet boys at a coffee shop, and I'm here sitting in front of a you know, press conference and they're asking me questions about world and I'm like, what am I doing? You know, it's very difficult. I'll tell you a story. Yesterday I was, I was on a flight to Mumbai and um, uh, Harleen Diol, who's a 24 year old cr cricketer, the women's World Cup cricket team was coming back and she was sitting right next to me. I actually didn't know her name. I knew she was a cricketer because I saw her and she started talking to me. And uh, she was so sweet and she was so nice and she started asking me, you know, just these questions because I've also signed with a cricket league just yeah. now. So yeah. she was like, I'm so excited you're coming to cricket. And she was, I mean, she was so young. And uh, I said, oh, you know, bad luck. You guys lost. You had a solid tournament in the semi-final. And she was like, yeah, but the media, they were killing us. They were just, they were so after us. And she's like, it's been four days since they lost. And she was like, I'm still Didi, pata nahi. You know, they're still, they're still talking about how badly we played. And I said, but if you're going to let, if you're going to take four days to get over a loss, Harleen, it's going to become very difficult for you. Like, trust me, you need to take a night and you need to get over it because that's the only way athletes can work. So these are the kind of athletes, that's the pressure you feel when you're 24, you know, where she's thinking about it for four days, she's sitting on a plane and she's like, I'm going for IPL now, but they're still, imagine I have to face the media and it's, so it is something that all athletes deal with. And I think people sometimes forget that we are human. Um, they forget that we have, we feel emotion, we're in a high pressure job um, all the time, you know. Uh, if you have a bad day, maybe you'll know about it, maybe your family will know. If we have a bad day, the entire world knows about it and they write about it and they have an opinion about it. And imagine dealing with that as a young, um, you know, young 24 year old, 22 year old with that much spotlight on you. So you have no choice but to be thick skinned because if you let it get to you, you're not going to get there. I promise you, you're not going to get there because you'll have multiple breakdowns in on the way and especially today with the way media is.